Mm-hmm. Well, that's the most, I didn't find out until like right till the end that um, professors and staff didn't have to be vaccinated. Did you know? Really? You didn't know that, right? I just walked around thinking everyone, you know, like, right? You had to have, and you had to show proof. So the staff is because they're unionized, right? And so are the faculty. So I think that's what, and that's vaguely what I understand happened. Like they said, they said no to it. Or, you know, we're able to argue against it. No, no, I don't, I don't know. I, so in March 2020, there was an email from a person who became a or the former provost at that point, um, saying how interesting it would be to study a disease spreading across a campus in the fall. You know, and I just responded with like, this is horrendous. I mean, it was just like, and it was written to all these people. And it was just like, maybe I mean, but it was just, oh my God, you know, like, so anyway, I'm just, it's interesting to sort of see the behaviors of, of um, admin and unions and, right. But you have to, um, so so now we, you know, now I guess we had to show, right? We had to show a cut. So I had to like enter a thing, which I'm happy to do, but I didn't, you know, I didn't check my email properly. So I was I sort of did on the last day and you get, get this email saying you, you could potentially cause harm. Like it was this kind of very like HR sort of thing saying, you know, you could really, you know, basically you could murder everyone. What are you doing? And, you know, and then you have the sort of time series of COVID and you're like, but not back here. Like not not here, not here. Like now, now, it's anyway, whatever. But um, okay. So you didn't know that it was weird. Yeah, yeah. No. <clears throat> Similar email from the uh, first day that they started completely over half for the students. Uh, at least I got an email that said you're non-compliant. You are non-compliant. You are non-compliant. Like very first day, you were non-compliant. You are non-compliant. Yeah. Wow. You weren't here at eight o'clock this morning. Right. The language is amazing. The language is amazing. I mean, and and somehow this is kind of just normalized, but human resources, just the, the you know, I mean, such a tell, right? They're obviously protecting the organization they work for rather than the, the, re, the human resources <laughs> who, uh, you know, your livestock resources, right? Anyway, so I don't know. Interesting. It's interesting you guys did not know that. I, I, I'm kind of shocked. Yeah, I thought it was just because I was oblivious, which is true also. Yeah. I guess, I guess unfortunately, we are kind of just livestock to the university. Um, <clears throat> well, right. I mean, it depends which part of the university, right? I mean, we, you know, we care about you. I want you guys to have right. great existences. I mean, really, I mean, that's sort of the... I mean, the Eisenhower yeah. of the university. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and there's... Yeah. <laughs> no, it's Ivy now. It's, so, <laughs> it's a what are we the public eye? A public eye. Tell me, um, one time I'm gonna write that. One of his philosophy professors. You know when you go by Waterman, there's that like, uh, like what is it? Like a shit, like a mobile trailer that they're pumping out the smokestacks or whatever. Oh, I don't know. No, yeah. what? Uh, it's interesting. It's a lovely structure we have now too, right? Which is the the two sides. Anyway, yeah. yeah but they're just like weird, like uh, like pumping out. The oh, I don't know. Like they suck on this thing. <laughs> the, Ky- <laughs> the Kyrie Irvings of uh, <laughs> the Kyrie Irvings. It gets, it does get, it's like, you know, any institution, like it gets a little hairy down there. And then there are just all these offices that kind of sprouted off with no windows. And, you know, I think you could lose your mind. Actually, I, I you know, the six years I spent at Columbia, I did not have an, a window to the outside world. The last three years was two floors under the earth's surface. It's not good for you. I'm going to say that. Um, my wife had lived in Germany for a while and she said there was a law there that she understood that something like everyone had to be within 12 feet of a, window to the outside world or something like that. It was like, you know, right, 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 right. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, so it's a bit 
So you could imagine maybe it's not, you know, the other conspiracy, like things are going wrong downstairs. They're just trying to keep them, <laughs> give them some air. And it's like, so many vice provosts, right? You gotta, you know, it's like, like what's the collective noun for them? Cause we'll need some proposed dormitory in uh, like UC Santa Barbara, which has no windows at all. Mm -hmm. um, no, that's an, ex is that an, exp I mean, it, what? No, so some, some like multi-billionaire who went there and is now worth like 80 billion, I'm forgetting his name, he's irrelevant. Uh -huh. um, but he proposed this design, apparently, because his hobby is architecture. And it's like <laughs> an architectural nightmare. It's, it's disgusting. That sounds like an experiment. Yeah. And right, the architect right, right. in charge of the, of the housing project <laughs> at the public uh, resigned in protest over the last couple of oh. years, I think. Oh, that's a, something from the 60s. Right, I mean that's sort of that, you know, the the just go outside. Right. It's kind so, of like James Hill Ultra vibes a little bit. Right? <laughs> Jason's talking about windows and he keeps his blinds shut twenty four seven. It's a choice. It's a choice. The light's sensitive on the wires in the attic, but you don't put on the sun box and then you can basically then you scream to something. Okay, I'll give you a trope and then we'll move on from that. But I, I wanna talk um Okay, so here's a question. The assignments, you know, I've had them due on Fridays for a long time, just so it's structured. And it's also this 11.59 p.m. That was just like kind of happened at some point because, and then the idea is not to hand it in at 11.50, it just gives you like on the front. So is it, could we do, like, would it be better to have it on Monday? Like, you know, the same thing, just put on a month. Like, I don't want to destroy weekend or whatever. Yeah. Sure. I think based on like how Fox worked with the scheduling, yeah. it was like sometimes there'd be relevant information in class on Thursday. Yeah, that's right. Or yeah. we'd have office hours and then have to finish the homework. And so a lot of us would be really trying to too uh, much. All right. Crank, uh, crank it out on, on Friday. So. What's a good day then the next week? I kind of like Friday because then once it's done, it's out of your hands and there's only oh God. And <laughs> oh my God. We should do it Friday. I know, but I don't want you to, I, but your brain is going to like slot things into what's possible. Yeah. yeah. And apparently you have other things to do. Yeah. I, I'm gonna veto Alex's. <laughs> <laughs> right well, we we all have chaos homework that we do every weekend on Friday. Oh, okay. It's good stuff. Basically, it's an '80s class, right? This is like learning Atari or something. It's really, it's just I mean, it's it's awesome. It's just like it. That's you know, '70s and '80s. Just this was this just festival of figuring out what is a monumental discovery, right? The deterministic systems can be com fundamentally unpredictable, and then all the stuff that you know goes with that. <laughs> yeah, let's. Let's make it Monday. I'll change it to Monday. That's right, right? Yeah, okay. Um, all right, so I'll change it. And we'll talk about it today. The idea, again, is just to have a simple question or two. It's not going to be, would you know, not be as much as Pox, yes? Okay, I'm sorry to ask. Can you show where the assignments are? On yeah, the and I will, I will, I will do that. Let me, let me just. All right, let me do it. Okay, yeah. I was trying to find them and I kept in the up the wrong place. Yeah, so if you go to the website for the course, right? So, and in, in general, you know, if you're struggling, like you can search, you know, I sort of idiotically myself just put pox into the top. Um, but, you know, there's all this stuff, right? And so you should be able to click on that one. And that should be it. Depends if I've updated or not. The load is slow for some reason. Beautiful. Come on. Um, so the things are up here, and I, I will update these instructions and stories. So for example, this is, this should be, oh, I need to, ch I need to change it a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, I thought I published it. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. 
Okay, so there's, you know, this is Tuesday, right? Just a few things. So the, so the archive is starting, but it's just a continuation, right? So it's the same, same place. And assignments are here. This is the one which is the extra things that I've taken out over the years that do not touch. So this is a do not touch. It says number 30 on it. So 15, which makes total sense, of course. So it's now it's 15. I did change around a little bit. So it should say 15, assignment 15. How do you feel about that? Okay. Yeah. And then uh, it changed. I did have a couple of things in here. So we're going to talk about the word shift equation. So that's, you know, we're just going to go through it. I want you to understand it. And then this is just a little bit longer. We basically come up with some text based, some text basically for, to, for analysis. And, and the idea that, 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 you know, there are lots of texts you can get hold of anything you want, right? I mean, so much is written in text, but. Um, that are story based, right? In some way. So, want the full text? Could be a could be a long book or a book series. You know, Harry Potter obviously has been something people have played with. You know, Moby Dick is usually something we tear apart, but it's a bit funny. Um, you know, a TV series if you get all of Game of Thrones or whatever. Subtitles uh, could be a screenplay. Subtitles or scripts, different things that you can obtain there. Doesn't have to be any of these things I've suggested. You want about 100,000 words, you know, more than a million would be great. 100,000 words is, you know, the order of a book. I think Jane Austen's are like maybe 140,000 might be the longest, which she wrote at a tiny little table in the corner of the kitchen. Um, and, uh, you know, transcripts of shows, you know, you, you get different things. And, of course, you can do more than this if you want. But um, I don't, we're making, making this up. This should be just a fun thing, right? So, um because you have, you know, character name and then what they say, and you can see who, which characters are much more clearly with each other. So you could kind of get that temporal network of who's involved with whom at different times and the way they talk. I mean, I, I think that could be pretty interesting, but that I haven't seen that done yet. So, yeah, temporal interaction networks of, of characters, and that starts to get to plot, right? So no one has, to my knowledge, done this computationally extracted plots. We've, we've talked about it in parks, like computationally extracting in a simple way, which we're going to um, explain properly. Uh, emotional time series, right? The Kurt Vonnegut st story. But that's just a very big, big over, you know, a big piece of it. It's not the plot. So character interaction networks and maybe place interaction networks, you know, the context people are in or characters are in could give you a plot mechanic. You know, how do we put in West Side Story into a machine and Romeo and Juliet and sort of pop out and say kind of the same thing. Like, how would you, it's a really difficult problem. Um, uh, anyway, so that's the, that's it. And then, so this is just list, right? Just list some things. You should talk with each other about what you might play around with them. Um, you know, there are different kind of messy sites around for like TV scripts, you know, which some are done well, some are, you know, um, and books, we talk, talked about in um, story time, which is our group's meeting. Uh, the, if you have Kindle, then you can use Calibre. Has anyone played around with this? It's an app called, or Calibra. I don't know how you say that. Um, let's look at that one, Calibra. So this thing, it's a pretty old school looking object, um, but you can download, you can, get Kindle, Kindle books into it or any other, I guess any other book. You may have to do a little thing that gets a, the, the digital rights off it. There's a DDRM script, which is separate. Pull that off and then you've got, you know, and, and that is, I mean, it's a bit, obviously a little bit of a sneaky thing to do, but if you own the book, then, it, you know, you should be able to um, perform analysis on it. And, and we've certainly done that in the past to get hold of things like Harry Potter and so on, right, which you just, of course, isn't sitting as text anywhere online. Possibly. You guys are clever. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I guess it is. <laughs> now that I say it out loud. Yeah, you can, you can find like, Anything. Second page of Google, like, what it looks like. Okay. Right. Okay. But you can, do, you know, and there are PDF tools that are PDF to text things. You can do all, yep, yep, yep. 
you can just do it. Yep. I mean, of course, if you have millions of PDFs, then you need some you know, command line thing. One, you can select all, dump it into Emacs, of course. I'm kidding. Whatever you like. What's that? Yeah. Yes, Maybe correct. Maybe a question to keep pure text, but just heads up every one question. Yeah, yeah. As Kindle is in general for its own displays of its, like with images, it's kind of a horrible mess. It's not good at that. Like, I don't know. I, I, don't, I tend not to buy any Kindle things that have a lot of, because you just, you read the comments and they're like, book's great, but the Kindle version is hard. Like, that's a common. Okay, so maybe it's not from there. <laughs> Yeah, that's just yeah the the man who wants to go into space for ten minutes, or two, 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 I exaggerate. Yeah, that's a that's a twenty year goal. Ten minutes. <laughs> what a what an idiot. Um, <laughs> oh my god, so embarrassing, so embarrassing. Um, uh, yeah, that's you know, so uh, you know they're trying to make money. I mean, a good Kindle thing works well and so on, but. I don't think it does a good job with, yeah. The one of the problems with PDFs is, you know, because of the font, the way it's rendered. So things like, like FI will be one object. It'll be one character, you know, like it's a printing thing. So like this will be just a one character, for example. So you get, you know, when you paste it somewhere else, it's always like a little bloop. You know, it's sort of fixable, but it's like just nasty thing. You see, yeah, copying out of PDFs and just into text is, like you say, I mean, there'll be hyphen, there'll be the hyphenation gets, you know, and if it's two columns, it's sort of just smush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's always a bit disgusting. Like, so you you small bits now and then, like I'll do a small bit because I want to have it somewhere and you have to always tidy it up. But um, in principle, like the, the, whatever they are, AZW is the Amazon one. You probably, I don't know if you find that floating around, but you know, the various versions of, digital books, um, you know, have different formats, but should be able to come out as text. Anyway, so that's, there may be some, you know, something different to Calibra or whatever it is that works better as well, but that's that's the one I know of. So. How would you feel about, like, like an author selected work that comes up to like a discrete book series? So I think that's, I think that's good. And then what you would do is, um, I mean, and there's some really fantastic ones, you know, like all of Agatha Christie, right? Like then each one of course would be its own object. You can't really, you wouldn't want to say, but you can say big things about what happens, you know, throughout, like what's the word usage or something like that. It's more about author style perhaps, but there's, there are, there's early on in what's sort of called, you know, digital humanities that it's, it's part of the why it hasn't done so well, I suppose, because people argue got upset with how people did an out, you know, like did Shakespeare really write Shakespeare? You see, allegedly in Agatha Christie, like the last couple of books, the number of words and the concreteness, there, we have measures, there are measures of concreteness of words in abstract, you know, kind of changed. And she she did have some form of dementia. And, and in the last book, I think it's about an author who was losing her memory. You know, so it's a lot, you know, it's all very, um, but there was a reduction in, um, I think, just the number of, like the number of types and tokens, which we talked about in part, part right? The number of, um, the le the size of the lexicon. Uh, yeah, that's super interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it's right because it got carried on by his. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people have looked at those. I've looked at Wizard of Oz, right? Because there were many. Who is it? Wizard of Oz is. Um, thank you. Uh, you know, there's a famous Wizard of Oz, but there's a whole bunch of books. You know, Return to Oz, all these different Oz things. And uh, there's some study of that you can see that maybe it wasn't written by him at some point or whatever. Yeah. Um, so there are those bigger things, but there's also like, you know, what are the kind of, if you can, if we can get out stuff about stories internally, you know, are they using the same kind of mechanics? Uh, you know, can we get the, the plot out of these things? Um, 
yeah, there are some prolific wow. Okay, okay. Is this bad? Like, am I doing something stupid? What am I doing? Okay. <laughs> Click. Click continue. Then you end up in a South Park episode. Okay, so um, I'll give you one. I'll give you a trope, and then we'll go back to it. This is, uh, they look like us now, right? This is a classic uh, sort of horror movie, whatever trope, and I know I've mentioned it in Pucks, but um, Battlestar Galactica, you know, there's this realization that the, the people are, in fact, you know, robots or, or, you know, it could be just a spy, right? Or something that, that can kind of fit into this as well. But this, this is sort of a trope that's floating around for the pandemic, right? Because of the asymptomatic, early on for the asymptomatic spreaders was that, you know, because it's not like you're fighting a virus, right? The virus doesn't turn up and it's like, you know, has some funny accent or whatever, like in, you know, like little ray guns. Or it's like, it's it's the humans that are the the ships, you know, the, or the soldiers essentially. So uh, in these, yeah, so that was a, it's kind of a classic thing. It happens all the time. There you go. Battlestar Galactica is, is the Trump gamer. Um, the walking chrome toasters, which I'm sure you, probably haven't seen, but it was an incredible, you know, rebuilding of the, of the 1981, uh, which was amazing, <laughs> uh, completely insane. Uh, but, but, um, but a pretty solid, uh, solid thing. Anyway, you can see it's everywhere. They do it all the time. Okay. I'll find better trips. So in a couple of weeks, we're going to have a very nice trip, which is Groundhog Day, which is named for the movie. Um, and I'll talk about that some more because on average here, that is the, coldest day of the year um, and that's a body of work the telethon right we have a, we have a name for it uh yeah no we should have a, a festival but that's on average about the coldest day here it's different it varies of course around the world and especially across the u.s but it's connected to you know when is spring and all these things so it's a big indicator of climate change and it's it's somewhat fickle um anyway but i'll have to talk about that trope because that one's used a lot uh, I'd like to have a, because it's also how thinking works a little bit. It'd be good to have a class where you just sort of, you try to solve a thing and then you just explode and then you go back and then it's a Groundhog Day situation. You know, the clock goes and you. I mean, the, the world explodes after 20 minutes, uh, outer wilds, like those. Oh, as long as you have, you have to do a certain thing to kind of. Yeah, but it, well, it does it no matter what. Oh. So you can't be like a really good person. But you can like use what you learn to like get further the next time and stuff. Right. Of course, it's been parodied so much now that the the, the ver there's a Legends of Tomorrow one where they do it, which is a ridiculous show that I, you you shouldn't watch. But um, but it is interesting how much they learn in that they do that. You have to do the the fun montage at some point where you do whatever you want. Um. But the main character who's in the loop doesn't know they're in the loop and, and finally talks to one of the other characters. So there's one person who's remembering everything, just like Groundhog Day, and says, oh, it's like Groundhog Day. But then the next time they wake up and come back and they go to that person, they say, it's Hedgehog Day. You know, like this sort of the struggle to like you know, accumulate knowledge. Anyway. All right. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, collected all of the. He did some speed running. It's true, right? Especially off the, with Phil. Um, <laughs> but eventually, had yeah. There are estimates, right? Forty thousand. So, like, there are various estimates of how long, how many days. It's right. I think there are some estimates like decades. <laughs> that was a long, long time. Yeah. We definitely did, right? Yeah. No. I think he cycled through that a little bit. Yeah. How do you get out of it? Though? What's the what's? <laughs> what's the what's the escape? What's the what's the? Yeah. The, <laughs> 
But it's a virtual, like a virtuous escape. Like what? What's his, it's an escape room. I mean, it'd be pretty good. It'd be pretty good. Sure. <laughs> the Hermione Granger. <laughs> All right. And you can't keep anything except your head. Yeah, right. You can't write anything. To, right. That's. No, you start. No. <laughs> I can't believe they made that film. Um. Okay, so. Uh. You know, you know when it, you know, there's a musical, a Groundhog Day musical, which is great actually. Um. Yeah, it's recent, last five, six years. We went to see it, and uh, but the opening day, Bill Murray turned up. Unexpectedly, and he came back the next day. <laughs> and he loved it. I think you know he loved it. It's uh, it was uh, it it was an interesting thing to put into a musical. They did a good job. Yeah, good. So. Okay, I'm going to try to explain how we do this basic measurement thing, and uh, which is confusing to a lot of humans. So I might jump to that, and then I'll come back to some of the motivation as well. I cleaned up this front end. So the list of papers, you don't have to worry about this too much, but it's like, this is a big one in terms of building this hedonometer thing, which we will take a little while to get, not today, I suppose. Well, this, is, this is the sort of the, the basic elementary one where we kind of got the idea together, which really starts, you know, tried a few kind of, um, well, you know, it's a while ago. Uh, so it wasn't deep learning, but, you know, m machine learning black box kind of things for, with names like opinion finder and, and you know, like, you know, what are people, you know, we, we, the idea was, oh, let's see if, we're, and I'll talk about this, but you know, can we measure emotion from text, right? That was just our question. And, and it's sort of obvious that there'll be all these things that could come out of that, but how, how can we do it from text? So we're looking around to find stuff off the shelf just to start with and nothing really worked, right? Couldn't really get a heartbeat out of this thing. You put in text and just kind of flatlined. Um, and, and we began to see that those, um, Clever black box things, you know, they're inscrutable and um, God knows what they were trying to do, but they were just weird things like say, you know, this word was a positive or a negative thing in the middle of the context and, and you just had no idea how it was working. So eventually what happens was I just Googled for words and like, you know, with happiness scores or emotion scores, you know, and, and found a paper that I'll talk about. Um, and from that, we were able to build something and, and, and then discover all this stuff. So these ones are about the positivity bias of, um, of language. And then uh, this, these are about the word shift things. We talked about this the other day, and I didn't have this paper. And this is the, I don't think I did. This is, these two really, you know, kind of, and all of them have word shifts in them, but they, and they get better and better and better. And then this is a Python package, which makes it useful for people. Um, I will say, I mean, back here, you know, GitHub was not really a thing. We weren't really thinking about it that way. It was still that kind of physics kind of world where you do stuff, you make all these figures, you did it, and you presume other people will make their own. Right. Businesses, for good or bad, tend to make their own things all the time. Um, and so, you know, I think we're in a much better place now, of course, with GitHub and so on. And then this, this big piece will come later, which is about meaning, which is really what this is about. All right, I gave you this little drum. Um, but I wanted to just go straight to, we'll come back to this. Let me just give you some fun. No, we're not going to do that. I'll come back to that. But I wanted to tell you some things. You can just get a little, little light to this. Okay. Just so you have this, just, this is just so we, we, we're talking about the actual substance to, to start with. So this is the thing I go, you know, I found just Googling, right? It popped up this A new study. And so it was about 10 years before um, when I was looking. And, and so this is work with uh, Chris Danforth 
at the time, you know, really just the two of us. We decided to get graduate students after that, but we were relatively new here. And I'd been in the social sciences for many years and um, su suggested, you know, we could do this. And, and he'd got an email from a friend, and I'll show you that as well, uh, about this website that claimed to measure emotions, and, but like all sorts, like quixotic, you know, like weird things, like hundred sort of hundreds of terms, which, so it wasn't, it wasn't finding the fundamental dimensions of emotion. It was more like, you know, here are all the kind of flags, you know, lonely, that's another, you know, all sorts of things. It was really mental states, perhaps, this might be, might be a better thing. It won awards. This is called wefeelfine.org. Um, but it was just an email from a friend saying, check this out. And, and from that, we kind of built this whole thing. Okay, so, all right, so here's the, is this just all stuck on one thing? Yeah, okay. So a new study. So this is done at the University of Florida, I think. Um, and it, it, as we'll see when we get to the meaning stuff later, this connects back into, I won't go into it too much now, but worked in the 30s and 40s trying to measure meaning, which is kind of a, which, you know, CIA got excited about. There's, it's, there's an interesting history that I don't fully understand, but there's some pure um, science aspect to it. You know, this is a deep, profound thing. And then uh, the instrumentalization of it is, is sort of potentially very, I don't know, we'll see. Um, so what's, what happens in this? Uh, this is, so, so language is mediating uh, meaning here. And of course, many other studies looked at facial, have looked at facial expressions, you know, video, like all sorts of you know, um, images. Right. This is just going to be about words in isolation, which is obviously limiting, right? We're taking away all context. So I want you to think about all the things that are wrong with this and tell me about them. Um, you sure? I mean, I, I mean, I seriously, like you can critique it, but let me just set it up. Uh, so you've got students, of course, because this is how we do our psych studies and tell, say things about all of hum, humanity. Um, we have a captive uh, group who are going to get a grade if they answer these things. Nothing wrong with that. Um, and uh, so they're given isolated words and then a scale. And they were, we'll, and as I said, we'll get to these later on. There are these three scales. They have kind of odd names, valence, arousal, and dominant. Um, and I'll talk about them in a little bit. I think on the next, yep. Yeah. So three scales, and they're given a scale of one to nine, which is a lot, right? So one to nine. Okay, so I'll show you that in the next one. A thousand words. This is also really important. It's not it's not many words, right? People's vocabs are tens of thousands of words, typically. Um, there's a, I know I showed you in parks, but there's a way of estimate, trying to estimate people's um, vocab sizes. And I sent it to Jacques Bailey, who's in classic series, The Spelling Bee. Um, question and person asker uh, he has been for many years uh yeah i think he got a he estimated his to be like fifty thousand or something like that right? yeah and this is some website that does that it's not yeah i mean he knows a lot of words he has a game apparently like if you can give him a word in class that he can't spell then you get an a for the course <laughs> so that's not gonna happen it's not gonna happen there are some limits on you know you can't Yeah, and it's 50,000 lemmas, you know, like it's like, right? It's not counting all the conjugations or okay, yeah, roots, sort of roots. Yeah. yeah. But Scrabble, right? Scrabble doesn't, you don't need to know, like there are really good players who are not English speakers because it's a mathematical, it's just, no, and it's very upsetting for language people to go up against some douchebag who knows, who can barely speak, you know, like, you know, because they're like an engineer or something and, uh, you know, and likes chess or something like that and has no, you know, gift with language, but is like, you know, anyway. Or a machine, because machines will crush us in Scrabble, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, well, he's, he's won like 12 of the last 20 years or something on the international level. It's insane. Um, and he doesn't speak French, but he decided to memorize the French Scrabble Dictionary after a French Scrabble competition and won that. 
So you put the pieces, the pieces of that in your head. They're just pieces. They're just, you know, it's mostly patterns. Like right. Right. It's, I mean, Scrabble's fantastic. You know, there is a nice variation in the collective, right? So Settlers of Catan and, and Scrabble, you can just play where you just try to get the highest score collectively, like as a pair. Yeah, and then, you know, people will play each other in, in a friendly, you know, you go to a cafe. Actually, I used to go with a friend in uh, Melbourne. We used to go out to, like, uh, hear a band play, and we'd, we'd bring a Scrabble box and sit it down, and there were beers everywhere and stuff, and we'd play Scrabble together. That was sort of more adversarial. But um, but I know there are people where, they, you know, you, you – so you do different things because you're going to try and set each other up, and it's sort of fun instead of, like, I will kill you with Scrabble, you know. That would be really fun because I'm, like, a person – but the but the ending the ending of settlers of Catan, like is an interesting game i remember the first time i played it like was just so such a letdown because like someone got 10 points it was just sort of like it just feels like this was not a but so the collaborative version is you can play what do they do i think people play 32 two rounds or something like that maybe it's 36 so you can divide it between four and three people or whatever so you've got a limit on the number of rounds or the number of turns and you just try to get as big a score as possible so i mean you can play both right you play hate-based katana and then collaborative katana <laughs> Uh, you need the you need the chess club. You need the chess club. Yeah. Yeah. It puts put some put some money. We had a chess club for Scrabble. Put some put some put some money. Yeah. 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 I mean. <laughs> but Scra Scrabble, Scrabble, um, like the just the most primitive, you know, games that you can play online. When that first Scrabble became a like a, you know, online chess had been around for a long time, but the sort of a game you can play online with Scrabble would just crush you. Like if you put on the highest level, and it's you know instantaneous. There's no sense that this was you know difficult. Um, it's it's quite it's quite um, sad. I do wonder about machines doing cryptic crosswords. I do wonder. I think it's an interesting challenge. They they can do it by structurally kind of doing things, but encrypting more information than a classic Scrabble crossword, which is like you can solve that group for pretty easily. I, I mean, generally, you know, in the English have what they call the quick one, which is right. it's just definitions, right? And they can be a little. The American ones are kind of funny because they can be. A little a mixture, right? This is sort of Will Short's honey kind of jokey things. They're a little bit. There's a little twist in them, but I don't think it I stops think you. The, the density of the grid on yeah. The grid. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Once you find like one solution, you can be pretty confident about. Right. Correct. That's a very so. If you notice in that cryptic crossword the other day, which I will not, I would do, I suppose, but maybe once a week. Um, they, they're, they're, there's always a space, right? There aren't, you never have those blocks. Yeah, right. which is illegal on the internet. Everything has to be secure. Right, you have these big sections like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's one of the things for playing it. Invented in the US, I think. Yeah, right, I think so, yeah. Um, and then the English got, I mean, it's obvious, English would love it, I mean, you could imagine, right? So, and, you know, um, imitation game is sort of a nice moment in there where they're cheering and his mates are all, Doing cryptic crosswords. It's a nice little moment because it is, it's a spooky thinking. Anyway, uh, we haven't talked. Wordle. Wordle. If I didn't think it, I got two of these. Uh, so this is the one I was going to say. I was going to get one. <laughs> but yeah, I kind of just did it. But you're doing right. I mean, it's like, um, that's a good contagion thing. It seems to be, it doesn't seem to be queuing on. It seems to be just like, so a nice story, right? This guy made a thing for his partner and named it after himself, right? His name is Wardle. Oh, yeah. 
It's W A R D L E, so it's Wardle. Yeah. But there's freestyle. There's freestyle. I think I'm going to call it freestyle, where you just like do you know crazy like fun time words and just see what. Well, I had, I think I had like spicy mango panic the other day. Like it was panic was the answer. I know I had mango. Because you can do onset or a tone, you know, you can do those kind of basic ones to try and capture as many letters as possible. Um, oh yeah, yeah, the hard, the hard mode, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Well, it is interesting because it is a. It doesn't seem like it's a a mind hack or something like it is a wood it is a little word game and you know i don't, so this is from a couple of days ago snake dirty proxy <laughs> so i think there's that's where you just uh the, i think you could have um foul wordle where you just guess swear words and then and then when you've got it you just like nail the the right word and then you know the next day you show it up um you could have wordle poetry, right? Where you somehow, where you somehow construct something, and then just deliver. Anyway, it's 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 a charming little it's a charming little game. Yeah, yeah, hard mode. Right. <laughs> Doesn't work for speed run, right? Because you just you just you just got it again. Yeah. Um, but look, an interesting example of a seemingly. Benign, if anything, mildly nutritious kind of thing to spread amongst humans, which is a change. It's a nice change. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Who would have guessed? I mean, there are a lot of word games around, right? Like Spelling Bee has been another huge one, like the New York Times one, which is. I mean, there are people, like, there are these super Spelling Bee people who wake up at 4 a.m. Because that's when it, or wherever it is, clicks over at 3 a.m. And, and they're off. And then they write these huge things in the comments section of giving people clues. Like it's. You know. There's a Twitter account where you can tweet complaining about words that you think should have been. There's a lot of videos. It's a lot of complaints. A very active account. Yeah. I may have tweeted something which shows a little video of like typing in a word and then clicking and it says no. And I'm like, oh. It's pretty weird what's allowed, like wallaroo, which is a type of wallaby and kangaroo, you were going to say. But not potteroo, not potteroo. Oh, so wrong. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's a donkey sit or mule situation. I, it's like it's just a, yeah, run out of names at that point. It's like in between. Yeah, you know, wallabies are about to sit. Kangas are. Well, they come in all sizes, right? There's a Simpsons hopping mouse, which is about this big, so scaling. The, the kangaroo platform kind of made them all. There's six foot something. The big reds are six foot. Is that not just marsupial? They're all they're they're all marsupials, yeah, yeah, and they're just like it's a good. This is a good design. Let's make let's 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 pump out all. And the aquacas are about that big. They look like muppets. Um, <laughs> We go through it. We go through it. Yeah. We go through it. But right, there was that scaling example in Pucks, right? Of it doesn't. If you scale up a baby, it doesn't look right. So. And then if you scale them up, I think they're not. They're pretty. Yeah, they they would look a little strange. I think. Yeah, you have to do some stretching still. It's just the human baby's head is, you know, just. Yes, it's really yeah. Right. If they're on islands, you get the yeah. right uh, dwarfism. Yeah. <laughs> so there are hopping mice. So there's a bunch of them. Spinifex, which is neat. Spinifex is this really tough plant. Um, so most of them seem to have. Names. I know there's a Simpson. Maybe they changed the name. Mitchell's hopping mouse. 
Yeah. The Darling Downs. Look at these guys. They're pretty great. Oh, yeah, Jim Boa. That's a good one. So this one's got more on the ear section. This one. Yeah. Why don't we have a... Oh, because it's going to be in their own box. It, so they're very, they're very mouse-like, these ones. But they do hop. Yeah, they, they don't scale to kangaroo. Yeah. Once you got the... If there's a... I mean, just do it as well. Yeah, sure. I don't know. Yeah. So is this sequential? I mean, so a big thing is basically time, the sort of narrative time. Yeah. I mean, there's some ordering. Yeah. Because we want to like. Okay. Story. Which one? Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Okay. It's really weird. I'll mention, it's the I'll, weirdest thing. I'll mention that. My uh, daughter's been getting me to watch that, aren't they? She, which she watches in Chinese, dubbed in Chinese for her education. <laughs> so I've been watching uh, One Punch Man. It's such a problematic skill ability. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because yeah, he it's not good. Yeah. It's not good. Pretty much straight away. It's just like This is how this is going to go. Um, okay, so we're going to look, let's look at this engine scale. And we're going to dig into this kind of weird thing, this valence, arousal, and dominance. This is kind of an, this is an origin story. So as we go through, we'll see how we you know, hold this thing up in different ways and get better at it. But back then, you know, we start with 1,000 words. We're like, okay, that's what we got, right? We, we don't have a means to score any more words. This was done in a, uh, you know, in a, a Experiment, you know, and we're not sure that we could easily add to it, so we, you know, we're leaving that aside. This is a found data set. So this is what these poor students were presented with. So this is valence. It's a bit weird, right? You were given a word, you know, kangaroo, and you have to, like, how do you feel in response to that word? So this is a very important thing. It's a social, socially transmitted experience. Like, how do you feel, right? So, um, you know, words like, you know, glory and paradise or whatever and murder. You know, so how, and of course, it's not like this thing. It's just like what happens to you when you see that word in isolation. Yes. I'm just wondering, did they say why, like, arousal is worse when valence is dominant? That's a good question. Um, so it's a funny thing. I don't know. Uh, I think maybe they do that to make sure people are concentrating a little bit, but it is a bit like you really do. I mean, when you see on something that yes and no have been flipped in some way. Like if you're filling out a form, I mean, personally to me, it's enraging, right? Like, cause you, cause you're just like, you know, you know, there's someone sort of messing with you a little bit, or they're trying to make sure that you have filled out the terms and the thing that no one reads, right? Like they're trying to trick you a little bit to make it look like you did something. Um, the wordle one is a bit weird, right? Cause I think that was done to stop accidental, cause enter is on the left. And backspace is here on the little Wordle keyboard, which is a, a bit of a violation of, you know, one's experience of a keyboard, which is, yes, delete's over here, but it's up there. But enter is on, enter on the left is like, you know, I think that must have been to stop accidental things. Okay, so what's going on here? These are Likert scales, right? So Likert scales are, you know, these sort of very typical, it's like, do you agree with something? Not at all, you know, a little bit. So, you know, they're worded in some way, like extremely at one end. And so, and often they're three, five, seven pieces. These are two glued together. So this is, 
Valence is described basically as happiness, sadness, and I'll show you that as well. So no one, no one reasonably would, if I say, you know, what's the valence of this thing to an average person, they have no idea what you're talking about, right? So you, these kind of communicate something, but you also, and it's a, but this is, this is a word from the 50s. This is, you know, was used as a description of this dimension in the 50s. And I think it's, you know, it is drifted in meaning problematically. So there's a, um, uh, you know, you have to use endpoint descriptors to explain to people what, what they are, right? So this is, what we're trying to do is say, you know, here's a three-dimensional space. You know, are these things really orthogonal? And it's believed that it's believed for a long time they were, and we'll unpack that as we go along, right? That they are in some sense in a orthogonal space because these are derived from, and we'll come back to it, uh, presenting on the order of 50 to 100 semantic differentials, right? So these things are semantic differentials um, to people. And so here's a word, and now, so we've got one word, you can respond to it, but all these differentials, like hard, soft, right? Or, um, you know, small, large, like basic kinds of ones like that, complex, simple, you know, all of these different ones that you, that people, both experts and I think participants came up with as possible um, differentials that things could be separated on. And so you, so once you, so now you have this like 50 dimensional space, right? There are all these dimensions like hard, soft, um, and so on. And, and then you can do an SVD type thing or PCA to figure out like which, you know, how, which of these dimensions are correlated, da, 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 what, what can we collapse it down to? And a lot of work, and we'll come back to it, you know, through many decades, kind of, there's a lot of argument about it, but came down to this. And sometimes this is called pleasure, but this is the VAD framework. And it's just talked about like that. And it becomes calcified. I mentioned the ocean one for personality. Uh, last semester briefly, that's openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism, right? And so that's something that's become, there are competitors, but that's become a framework. And again, this kind of five-dimensional framework for personality. People are somewhere in it. Yes. So like the words changing meaning over time or new time word over time, like that would be like data points, right? So are there any like things that you're getting like, uh, maybe not like, Oh yes, yes, yes. And so we've done that too now. The, and there are some efforts to do that because the language has changed in how you define the ends of these things. That's inconsistent within the same authors. So that's problematic. There's also the drift in meaning of words. And there's also, of course, that words have potentially many meanings. So what's the what's the first one that comes to mind is, is, is part of this. And it does seem that in terms of usage of words, there is again a zip distribution for the commonness of meanings, right? So there's a prime, there's a, a meaning that this word might be used. I think it's run. Run has the most distinct meanings in say the OED now. It's over a thousand different nuances of what run can mean, right? I mean, it used to be set. Set used to be the word that had like 800 definitions. And they get increasingly rare in their usage, right? There's a classic social phenomena kind of zip distribution thing. There's the most common ones. And the frequency of usage is the story here. And then it drifts away and you get these really rare usages of set or run. You know, we can run a program. We can run up a, run a flag up a flag. I mean, there's just so many uses of that word. So, uh, they were boiled down. So we're kind of, we're taking that as is, and we'll unpack that again later on, but we're taking that uh, as given that there are, these are the three fundamental dimensions of meaning. That's how this is sort of presented at the time in 1999. And the novelty of this study was to say, well, what do people think of words? Like words, um, which is, you know, evidently our sort of, our, 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 you know, our sort of main way of capturing meaning. Um, it's a really remarkable achievement. So you can see, yeah, this this is happy at this end, this is sad at this end, but these are really, this is a Likert scale. There are one, two, three, four, five points here. So neutral is glued together. 
So it, it, it is of that sort of more standard form. So the nine points are a bit odd, but yeah. Which, you know, when I first saw it, it took me a long time to realize, <laughs> you know, like there are lots of things in here that took a long time to kind of realize what they were doing. So arousal is weird, it is backwards. Um, so this is where you feel excited, but you could be jittery. There are some words that collide a little bit or don't quite agree with each other at these ends, you know. So sort of talking about the endpoint descriptors being difficult. And here you might be bored, um, you know, or or sleepy, you know, they're, they're not quite the same thing. And then dominance is, do you feel in control? Do you feel powerful? <laughs> you, Julia was not involved in, in this. this <laughs> Very. What is the hair thing? <laughs> Yeah, it's a little bit. <laughs> That's good. I like it. <laughs> the dominance, yeah. No one has, the butt chin doesn't exist in the weak part. <laughs> yeah, there you go. This is good. <laughs> oh my god. I laugh but I'm also horrified it's terrible. Yes, go for it. Like, you know, the two more dominant ones have the same position. It goes from like one arm to two. <laughs> like they thought about the level. This one is a little odd, yeah. They have their feet here as well, which is <laughs> now they're behind a desk. He's like he's like, I know. I don't no. like it. So that was a struggle. And these ones are all the same size, but it's the, you know, there's the creepiest looking <laughs> smile. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. So this is, this is, do you feel psychotic? Is really what that, that's eliciting. So, so let's see. So they're presented in this way, right? Like I said, so they're sort of told broadly, it's a happy, unhappy scale. Um, but at one end, so at one end, you are happy, pleased, satisfied, contented, hopeful. I mean, these are different. You know, it's very, Right, it's a broad, so that's the thing with the original semantic differentials that, that these kind of books came out of, they're simple ones, right? Like hard and soft, they, they're, they're well-defined antonyms. But then when you do something like SVD or, or PCA, what you're getting is linear combinations of these semantic differentials and you have to interpret them. Like you have to say what they are, and this has been done in the 50s and 60s a long time ago, you know, this the computational stuff is not quite there. So, what we'll see is in the last 20 years, starting really with this, bigger studies and more computational power allowed us to do all sorts of things. Right, so this is a good, so this is what they were told, and now, now you're, un, so now, so you're completely unhappy, that makes sense, but there's annoyed, so that's a little bit of anger in there. Uh, melancholic, you know, no despair, but bored is, this collides with the activity, the arousal one. So, so, so you can see that this is potentially, and, and it's fine to sort of just, just tell everyone this is what it is, and you tell everyone what the other ones are, and you run it, but you have to do SVD again because you have to see maybe you've correlated these dimensions by how you've defined them to people. And I think that's something that was missed. I think that took a long, took me 10 years to see that this is what's going on in this literature because it's a big mess. I mean, I wasn't looking every day, but sort of coming back to it, you know, every couple of years and like thinking about it all over again and, and then digging stuff out. Uh, these are the, this, this is the distribution of, according to this, this scores, for, for example, for valence. Um, and so again, it could be, uh, everyone could give a score an average of one. That, that's the highest it could be, or nine. And so this is just a histogram. These are words that fell between one and two, two and three, and so on. And so there are just a few examples. So this is a very initial thing back in the day to kind of like understand, like, is this, does this sort of make sense? Uh, you see some pretty neutral kind of things here in this kind of five to six, but it generally makes sense, right? You know, people have, people think more positively of these three things. These are just a few examples. Glory, luxury, trophy, and love, and, and triumph off the top. If you know these are bad, you know, these are negative words down the bottom. So it's, Sensible, these aren't quite as bad, you know, fault, you know, blah, 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 right, right. 
And you can see that this distribution is a little funny, right? And the problem underlying all of this is that there, there are a thousand words which were chosen by experts, like professors and faculty, who just thought, let's get a collection of meaningful words together. So that includes pancakes, right? It's a, it's a funny collection of words. And it has a few, like there's love and loved, but it's a, right? And there are no function words, right? V is an evaluate, which, you know, fair enough, right? But it's a thousand words, so it doesn't cover, go close to covering a real lexicon, right? Or for, for whatever you want, or, or certainly something like Twitter, of course, it's not gonna evolve. So the thing is though, that we started with this and we have scores for these words, and then we did uh, the simplest thing you could imagine, which is you just take the, the it's written here as P sub I, but this is the relative frequency of a word in a text multiplied by its happiness score. And uh, and that's the average valence score in this case, right? So we'll call it valence. We, we use the word happiness to try and make it, but, but of course valence is trying to do the right thing of giving you uh, a sense that there are two ends, right? That valence doesn't imply positivity. This is a bit of a difficult uh, part of, of the naming these dimensions as well. Um, so, uh, but you know, it's a happy, sad axis. And that does seem, look, after all this time, it does seem that that remains to be the big dimension, right? The, the, the second and third dimensions matter and the particular second one that we'll talk about, or we, the kind of projections, but basically, and you can see how this kind of maps out to, you know, the simplest organisms, right? That it's not happiness at that point, but it's like positivity, negativity, right? Are you drawn towards something or repelled by it, right? And having that in your basic architecture because emotions are these very primal re responses to things, right? And they give you these sort of big signals about how you might, you know, respond in this in this situation. <clears throat> I mean, there's a lot of argument what emotions for, but I mean, you can sort of you can sort of like disgust, for example. I mean, look at the roots of the words, right? Which is bad taste. You know, that's something that goes back to like the simplest organisms eating things, you know, something that's not good for them, and developing through evolution. You know, a thing is just, you know, don't, you know, spit that out. Uh, okay, so simplest thing. And w the focus we, we, we uh, settled on, because what, when we looked at those scores, arousal and dominance didn't have much of a range, right? So it just didn't, it wasn't much of a range. And, and maybe that's the way the questions were asked to people, but they didn't really show much spread. And there was clearly this kind of, at least from this thing, this is what was dominant. Now, Michael Jackson, is, you know, it's like J.K. Rowling. I mean, I have to say over all these years, like we've had all these kind of characters. I'll show you some stuff from Ellen later on. Wow, people's uh, reputations do not um, stay intact. Uh, so, but this is an example that I, it was before Michael Jackson died and, and then, you know, um, sort of his, you know his, his character became much more complicated. Um, so this was in this first paper. It was an example of how to score a text, right? So what we're gonna talk about is having a lexical lens. So this is from, uh, um, right. So this is Billy Jean. So what we're gonna do is just take the whole text. We're not worried about order. We're just gonna count the words for which we have a score. So all of these words are gone, right? We have lover, we have a score for love and love, it's adjacent. But we simply don't have these words. So we're going to just, they just, they're, they're filtered out. So you imagine a lens, we're looking through, you know, this kind of weird telescope thing we're building. You know, we call it a hedonometer. It's a, you know, a bit funny, but the idea is that it's, it's kind of an instrument. And we'll see that in fact, you can make the lens better, which is, and, and that's kind of a remarkable, that was not at all clear um, before him. So, some of these words, you know, will, will mean in context, you know, the wrong thing. So, you know, lie, for example, it's not bad. This is probably what people think of, like telling an untruth. But of course, you can lie down, you, you know, the, right. And so then we simply have their scores, right? So love is a, on average very high. This is from the ANU study. Lie is a very, because people do interpret that as meaning lie. So they take it as a negative thing. Uh, and these accounts for them, right? Girls mentioned four times. 
Now, this is a complicated song. Like this is probably this is a song that I think is hard, or the lyrics are hard to, um, in, in the so-called bag of words way to evaluate. So this is too small, right? It's bordering too small. But I'm giving you an example of how it's done. So you simply add them up, right? We have the um, weighted average of them, the frequency on the bottom, uh, how, you know how many words we found in our filter, and then weighting them by their average. So Billy Jean's average is 7.1 on, on what in principle is a one to nine scale, but typically it's between five and seven. And we'll see the reason for that in a little while. 6.3 and 6.4, these are, um, that's for the, if you took the whole album and you just took each song and just stuck them together, not weighted by popularity, although this is a gigantically successful um, song, um, um, album. And then Michael Jackson's, Ooh, we take everything and smush them all together. But that's going to matter a lot because um, that, that process, because while we're kind of getting popularity, you're just sort of getting, you know, the word the appears a lot and so on, da, da, da. You're, you're not indexing it by popularity of the song. So, yeah, I was going to say, um, when you made me Too small. Yeah, well, also all like almost every song is just driven towards like five or something. Like every song is right in the middle, and it's because like a lot of the songwriting, like you'll use some of the words, but it's not necessarily that like the words are used in it. Like how you can like test it, like what the song is about. Yeah. Um, yeah, songs are a little small. They're just a little small. Like poetry, the 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 song, so the words are used. Right. The way right. Used. It's, it's, it's similar to that. But you, I'll show you that at the larger scale, when we stick out to say genres, it's going to work out. Okay. So, so this is this temperature-like measure, large numbers only, right? We're not telling you about, there's no way we would say anything about this sentence or about a tweet or, you know. Now, people, unfortunately, though, will use this kind of thing over and over again for, like, tweets or whatever. And so this tweet is a... 6.4 or something, and, and it's just, you know, you look at it and say, no, 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 because yeah, there's, yeah. So what we have to do is create something that, to, to check to see if it makes sense that, you know, the score is going up or down, and that's what I'm trying to get to. So as I said, it's not meant to be used at that kind of level, and it's, again, this social measure of sentiment because it's how, how the readers perceive these words coming to them in isolation. So we're just sort of stacking them up. Uh, you know, so if you do use the, you know, you may, maybe you're talking about things in complicated ways, but, you know, if you do use hate and, you know, lots of negative words over and over and over, turning that into something where all the words are just sort of streaming past you, you know, it will broadly, roughly give you a score that's, um, what we, we can see is, is not unreasonable. So we're going to see the instruments tunable, like having a, that's a, that's a weird thing, like having a dial on the side of a, um, a telescope. <laughs> This is a bad one to study. Pretty good, actually. I didn't expect the quality to be there. So this is a weird one because this is a uh, high energy, low entropy sun, which is you know, kind of a physics, a difficult physics thing to do, I suppose. Um, I know this is great. I don't want to. I don't want to. All right, well, we'll have, we'll have some more videos. That was amazing. What's, like, the, the uh, idea that um, you use, like, dynamic to like, get words? It's just a, uh, an analogy, like, the, you know, measuring temperature. Like, you don't want to know what the molecules are doing. Like, it's, it's an averaging of a meaning. Thing. That's all. Right. Um, and uh, we, we're a little careful with some of these, these, uh, these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Entropy is, you know, well defined in terms of language, of course, it's where. Does, does it ever think of like, like, Yeah, no, no, it would, it would be a, you know, that would come across as negative. Yeah, but again, it's like too small a thing. Um, 
But if you wrote a whole book saying that in the last sentence was, but, you know, like that, it, it would be a painful thing to read. You know, like it would be, you know, irony, um, sarcasm, you know, they're hard things to, to, to measure, right? Like how sarcastic is this thing? I don't know. Like, but, yeah, sorry. So, <laughs> sorry, what was it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the 90s, you had to have a knot at the end of everything just to like <laughs> write, especially in written text, right? So you had to have a, the slash S was a good thing, and emojis have helped a little bit. Um, I mean, it's a bit rule of thumb, right? There isn't, but it's like a thousand words is, is usually a good minimum, a thousand words. Pre filter. Yeah. Is like Yeah. Yeah, that's so uh, right. That was like as long as they're not too so so you you know, your your lens has to somewhat be sympathetic you know, somewhat match up, right? So the lens you might construct, which we do later on for the New York Times, for Twitter for music lyrics, they're different. Right? There's no la 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 in which is you know, in uh, the New York Times and and not much swearing, right? Whereas that is, you know, yeah. I mean, the word shit, I think, is the term most common word on Twitter. I mean, at point, you know, I mean, it's a base function word. You know, like it does a lot of work for us. Um, you know, and f bombs, right? They're everywhere. So, but that's not a yeah. So. So it's exactly like swapping the lens out, or oh, but you can make a more complicated lens where you sort of smush all those things together so it can match up. But yeah, you could completely miss a text. For meaning, yeah. Yeah. So there's some work that that's been able to kind of see the drift of words, right? Which is interesting, like a pickup that because of the words that are around that's being used around that its dominant meaning has shifted. That's that's a little nuanced, um, but it certainly you know can happen with words. Um, but it is it is, if you like, it is a lens that's being applied from the present onto past things. So it will be you know increasingly inaccurate. There are slight variations depending on whether the evaluators are at least in that first one male or female. There's some uh, variations with age. But they're not giant variations, and there are there are variations across languages. But again, they're not gigantic, right? I mean, so there is a pretty strong, robust like you can translate between languages, and it works pretty well. When you bring it up to make an instrument like this, if you look at an individual word, like I think lying, lying in English, if you translate it into Spanish, I think comes off as being, you know like lying down. So that doesn't get interpreted badly, whereas primary interpretation in it for an English speaker will be you know, telling the truth. I was just going to say, I don't know if this helps clarify, but because this is something that came up with the character from Life is Strange too, where it's like, it's all the ratings are only from the perspective of the people who did the ratings, so it wouldn't capture it. This tool would not capture like changes in meaning or time at all. It's, a, it's like a snapshot. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'll, I'll move that question into the next next time uh, next week. But so so we just want about trying to because we're not getting there. But I just want to give you a sense of where we are. Um, wow, uh, this is very rough. This is from a terrible website called Hot Lyrics, which doesn't exist anymore, and scraped the uh, you know lyrics that people had put up. You know, and so it's a messy MySpacey kind of thing back in the day, uh, and then just bend them by year from what people had said was the year, right? So this is pretty bad. And you can see this is sort of messy, but generally there's this drop in this happiness score, and we have to think about what does that. But I'll say like point one is generally something that is solid, matters. Um, we'll have more examples, but it depends on the lens you're using. So there's something, so why is that, right? So is that real? Does that mean anything? Um, if you take out so this is something where we said, we've got a thousand words, what if we take out a, a quarter of them and use that lens and then repeat that? We'll just do that randomly, we'll take out a... And you, know, you still see, in general, this downward trend, right? We have to take out the average to kind of see if the shape's the same. 
So we couldn't add to the lens, which we did in the next, it took a couple of years to do that, but we made the lens 10,000 words instead of 1,000 words with a completely different study that we ran. But at the time, one way to sort of test the robustness of this thing, to get a sense of this thing making any sense was, well, what if we just you know, make our lens worse? So we did that randomly. Um, and, and you know, it generally goes down, so it sort of seems to be a pattern. And this is the average score um, for, for these time series that we had to remove. And you can see there's this really bimodal thing. It was one in four times we were taking out the word love, which is everywhere in music, right? So that's why um, sort of a quarter of it is, is, is kind of in this mode here. <clears throat> I'll show you a couple more things and we'll, we'll come back to it on Tuesday. We'll get there. This is going to be a fun course. Um, so this is then stepping up. This is music. These are titles, right? So there's another data set. It's titles, um, which is a pretty nutritious thing, right? Titles are going to be fairly dense in terms of meaning, right? You're not going to have too much loose stuff floating around in it. No la 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 la's. Um, <clears throat> and then looking at them over time, and what you see is this kind of, reasonable this is where we first started to think like this instrument rough as it is messy crazy thing is kind of doing something reasonable you know so gospel and souls up the top pop lots of happiness and metal is down down the bottom country and western for you fans out there stuff here but you know the, in in some ways like this is a new both a new um you know genre of music that comes into existence it's also a new emotional space that's being kind of colonized and I'm going to talk about this next week because we want to need to, we want to get to, maybe I can finish with this. Yeah. That's the album, remember, Rain in Blood. They won two Grammys for best metal performance for the songs mm -hmm. Eyes of the Insane and Final Six, which, which contains <laughs> the following less than happy stanza. Uh -huh. <laughs> dead flowers for a faceless dead. <laughs> A city engulfed by the smell of death. <laughs> Bodies piled beneath the mist. Uh -huh. Walking dead among the living. <laughs> That's pretty. That's, so there you go. There's your poetry. That's from an interview. I was on this podcast some time ago. Yeah, 2015. And it's a long piece. They did a beautiful job. They kind of came across our work and it was a weird thing because I discovered this podcast and was listening to it. And I got through like 60 episodes and then got this email like out of the blue and ended up being on like the next one, um, which was weird. And then, then, you know, this guy, Mike Wall, is just sort of a, uh, not, not a scientist, I think. Bob Garfield was, was on, on the media, but is, again, another example of someone <laughs> that we've had who is, who is, uh, have been ejected for, from Society for Bad Behavior. Uh, but this is what they were talking about. This is the top 50 artists by our measure, right? So you can see there's lots of happiness in here um, across many different, and here's from our crossword the other day, um, you know, many different uh, eras. And then the bottom ones, uh, interesting. And I think that they're quoting from, well, I'm not sure what it was, Slayer or, yeah. But they were doing the thing of like, does this make sense? You know, and I mean, it's fair enough at that point, you have to like read through some things. But again, this is sort of our first, that we've got something that might work a little bit. That's so awesome. I remember being about a little bit, like, just sort of looking to see, we were like, oh, could you just type the report in the comments there? Maybe that's like full of lines. And you were like, yeah. Okay, that's what we're doing. It's really hard. Yeah. yeah. And, so, and it took me a while to get to even here. But next Tuesday, I'll talk about how to do that properly because that, you know, and, and honestly, no one does it. They're just, they're... I'll show you the thing that we do is not super complicated, right? But it's just like, it's just, a, it's what, for whatever reason, I mean, too, too much for people. But you can, you can see just from the names of these, you know, maybe, maybe, the, maybe you love these things, right? And this is great. Like, this is your happy place, which is complicated. But, <laughs> but most people, many people, you know, will know, you know, this is very famous, but, you know, and, the, and the, in the, um, <clears throat> You know, the, the genres get very complicated, right? There's like black Norwegian death metal, like, like pirate metal. 
Right, right. It gets very nuanced. So you have to, we put industrial and metal kind of as a big blob. But. Right, right, that's right. <laughs> They've got to keep this. The Russia is right there. They got to, yeah. They got. They got to. They got to. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty good. All right. I will make that um, assignment have less things in it. Um, is any is anyone? I was going to ask you. Are you going back over to the? I'm going downstairs, but I can take something. You don't have to. I'm just like I'm not. It's it's for just one guard. Yeah, I can do that. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, just in class. <laughs> oh, and robots. Yeah, but he he was telling me what did I was thinking about. He told us that so Shaka is like this. This is my favorite toy from when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know this you thing? You showed it to me. Yeah, you've seen it. It's in my office. Too. Shaka was like. <laughs> Like his laugh, like Herbert, yes, yes, yeah. right at CMU. Uh, yeah, I know. I have to say, when I found out about Scott, I was like, that's not.